Hello amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today. So I want to get rid of this misconception that iDoors are easy. I've heard it a lot, iDoors are easy, all you have to do is replace an identifier. No, that's not how it works, because if all you had to do was replace an identifier, everybody would be finding iDoors everywhere. It's not how it works. Let's get to the basics first, shall we? So an iDoor, what are we talking about? Insecure direct object reference. So direct object reference we're talking about objects here so that's clear we need to define how we can access those objects that's the first thing so first of all define how we can access an object by either going and changing object identifiers by changing authentication like user identifiers that might also be possible um, by changing your own uh, authentication mechanism. So there's different things of how we can get to that specific object ID and how we can test for it. Now, okay, insecure, that's, that's pretty obvious. I'm not gonna explain too much about that, but let's think about how we can see which object identifiers we need to change because we're talking about a very expensive application possibly over 10,000 parameters. Let's talk about that. How are we going to check every single parameter? Are we going to do this manually? Or are you going to do this automated? That's a big difference because of course, all of the simple IDORs are mostly going to be gone, especially if we're talking about bug bounties. Now, the IDORs are going to be in places like um, returning an item, for example, because that's flows that's not often tested. You actually have to buy the item, you have to return the item, get a return note, and you have to see in that credit note, if I change my identifier to a different identifier, do I see data of other people? But there's a problem for me that robs me the wrong way because just changing an object identifier, you're going to get random data from random people. Think about this, sometimes you're testing in a production environment. That's not something I would want to do. What I always do is I make two accounts and I make sure that I see which object identifier belongs to my second account. So I'm not picking out random data on a production environment. Now, for me, that's important. I like data. I'm a very privacy driven. So I don't like it if people can see my data. I don't like it if I see other people's data. There's that. Then the second part, okay, manually versus automation. I'm going to walk this thing manually, okay, then I'm going to maybe change object identifiers everywhere, and that's going to take me quite a lot of time, and I'm potentially going to miss a lot of stuff. Then there's the second option, which is automatically. Now we're going to think about how we're going to have to do this automatically, because you cannot automatically change every object identifier because they're not named object ID those parameters. They're going to be named invoice ID. Um, they're going to be named address ID, user ID, etc. So they all have a different name, not easily automatable. So what are we going to do? Okay, I have two users. I'm going to take my second user authentication token and I'm going to paste it in my first user's session. And what I'm going to do is, when I click on something with my first user, I'm going to repeat that action with the authentication cookies of my second user. That way, when I'm clicking through the application, I'm automatically going to pick up on all of the object IDs. Now, here comes the third part. That's not easy. It sounds easy. Just click through the application, look at which things you're able to access that you're not supposed to be able to access. But here's the thing. Which things are you able to access and which ones are you not supposed to be able to access? That's not always easy. You have to look at all of these calls individually in your automation suite. So there's that aspect of IDORS as well. Now in the coming, I think days or weeks, uh, it depends because I'm a little bit sick recently, but I'm going to upload a series that's going to debunk the easiness of IDORS because I'm kind of sick of people saying that it's easy. It's really not. You have to keep your head straight. You have to really know the application. That's super important. And then you have to know what the heck am I doing with this specific call? And you still have to manually look at all of these calls. So there is no real full automation for this. This is why IDORs are easily missed. It's not easy to test for IDORs. And I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very, very much. I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye, amazing hackers.